Wow, 3D printing. Peter, um, can you tell the audience about yourself and what your role is here at Matsura before we dig into the actual detail of the machine? Yeah, well, I'm Peter Harris. I'm the additive manufacturing manager. So I'm running all of the day-to-day -day activities for all of our printers and all the products that we're showing. Okay, now we're going to be talking to Joe Bellis as well about HP uh, 3D printing, but this is about desktop metal. Now, is this fairly new to Matsura? And um, what does it add to your portfolio? Um, yes, it's new. They came to us late last year. I think very much on the success of HP, on the way we approach and use the technology. But I think for us, it's kind of going back to our home. And I think as much as we've had a really good success with HP, and we will carry on doing that. Metal is kind of where our customers are at. And I think for us, it's going to be a great fit. Okay, what we're we doing in here, this really excites me, this technology, because it's we're always talking about machining, you know, subtractive machining, but printing metal really is the, it, it's, it's next generation, isn't it? It is, and I think getting quickly, getting the market out there, getting put over some myths that you can just print metal uh, is a key part of what we're going to have to do. But here... But what are some of those myths? Um, well, that you can print everything. And, you know, um, I can print big parts, I can print great big parts, I can print finished parts, when in reality is we still have to center parts you know so in whichever method we're printing it we still have to center it in a furnace so we still have some laws of physics to overrule okay i want to talk about this because for those again that don't know uh, about 3d printing let's talk about that process because yeah we're printing here but there is a further process which which you can possibly explain for us so here obviously we're on the studio so we're kind of fdm printing so we have a filament we have basically a rod, which is the stainless powder, with wax and uh, polymer. And what we're doing is we're, we're extruding it through a hot nozzle, and we're printing it like a home FDM printer. But as we can see from the parts, they're in a sort of a semi-hard, almost wax-like status, and they're not final parts, they're not metal. There's, there's a good metal powder there, and obviously, we have to put it into a furnace and that's what people forget we're not magically printing metal but obviously we take that and then during a sinter run we obviously debind so during that same sinter run we're taking away that wax and the polymer binder so are we saying then that that's the start of the part and that's the finish is that yeah right? absolutely so we're having to take into account within the software around about 20 percent shrinkage because as well as you're extracting out the binder you're also obviously melting the material and obviously all of the balls of material are kind of getting closer together. So it's, yeah, it, that's what really says it to us is yes, we're printing, but you're right, we need a furnace to take that part into a truly final metal component. But it isn't, in most cases, going to be a final metal component. It will require an element of a small feature or something that going to print everything final we're going to be quite accurate 0 0.2 0 0.3 that was going to be my next question yeah. actually so the accuracy about 0 0.2 about 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 depending on the size of the component so it means you're still going to have bores that require machining we definitely see this technology sitting alongside Matsura where people want a end-to-end -end solution for almost printing the casting final feature machining okay now 316 so this is what you know in essence what we're printing here what's yep. the scope for the materials we can do what can we print on this machine peter on this particular platform we're finding it's really adaptable so as you can see from the components we have copper which is quite an interesting material for certainly for heat sinks and other components because it's quite an un unusual material to print with and we've also got titanium just been launched so you can feel the difference straight away between a um, What's the difference between those two that you actually have there? Because the surface finish looks different. That one's actually just had a little bit of a bead blast with some oxide. It's a, it's a, it's a cosmetic pretty blast, um, whereas that's straight off the printer. Okay, now people often look at these machines as like hobbyists, don't they? You know, something to play with, something to... But, but it, industrially, where do they fit? Who, who's your, who's going to be coming to you, Peter, and going... I, I need one of these. I mean, I can think of some applications, but it'd be good to yeah. hear how broad it is. I think it is going to be about as broad as it is long. There are there are bicycle companies that have already got the studio. You know, we've got aerospace companies that want it to try and dip their toe into additive. They want to start somewhere, and they want to see what they can do to make final components. So, you know, 
It's going to end eventually be as broad as we are on the Matsura side. It's very quiet. What about power consumption of it? I mean, I suppose you're just going to leave this running, are you? Is it, well, this, is it efficient? This runs on a 13 amp plug. So the printer itself is something that can sit anywhere. The way that we bound the material in the rods says it's a very friendly process. But of course, there's a furnace and a furnace requires power. You know, so yes, you're going to need 32 amp three phase to run a furnace and it takes sometimes two to three days to put those parts through the debinding and the sintering process. Uh, what about comparing the properties of the final product against a casting or something like that? The strengths, that's got to be a major factor. It is and I think it's the common myth. Once our part is sintered, it is a fully formed 98% density material. So it is a it is a casting replacement and it is for making parts additively that you couldn't make another way because we can have internal ports on this one. Redesign how you're making a part, uh, you know, diff add more strength to it by, by the way it's actually designed and created. Biggest critical thing for everything on additive is changing people's mindset on designing. You know, even, even like these end effector parts where they're strong, but here we can obviously build in a structure to take some of that weight back out again. So a lot of parts don't need to be solid, but it's very easy for us to do that. So you're right, it, but it's all about changing people's ideology really for saying, yeah, okay, we're gonna now change our, we can make parts as they come, but the more people think we're additive, then there's no question. Okay, so this is metal, then uh, from the same, if you just take a step backwards, from the same, um, in fact, just pick that part up there, Peter, because that's a, a really nice example, isn't it, from yeah. the metal side? The one we can't bring today is the uh, the shop system. So it takes what we're doing here on the studio, but it's in a powder based, um, which is a much more production based technology. So we're spreading powder using binder jetting and we're curing the parts into a biscuit state. And then we still center, still have the same contraction rates, but the smaller components are really nice. And here we can start packing 30, 40, 200, 300 parts in a small build volume, very much like we do on the HP but we're taking the parts away from the powder and we're sintering again. But you can see why it's clearly a lovely gear knob that we'd all be proud of to have a car that it would fit to. So you can see the types of customers that are now starting to say, hang on a minute, it's time for metal to come into the company. Absolutely fascinating. Now this particular then machine is no longer metal. This, what's, what's it this printer? It is strange because you're right, it's desktop metal, but here we have basically an FDM printer but we're printing in PA6 but we can also print in PEAK and PEC but not only can we print in those high temperature materials we can also lay in carbon fiber tape and we can change the direction so yes okay there are chopped fiber machines but here we're actually laying carbon fiber tape and we can cross cross weave it in the part so we take something that's inherently a small FDM part but we can You've had a go with this, it's strong. You know, so um, we can obviously map in where we want to put that carbon fiber tape to make a plastic part. You know, in many cases for jigs and fixtures are stronger or stronger than aluminium. You know, we're looking at sheet metal forming tools, you know, so. I can think of so many applications. It is really um, great to see this, Peter. Now, uh, you're opening a new additive uh, center in Colville, aren't you? Are. There's an opening day for people to know about that can attend. Could you maybe just tell them before we move yeah. on to see, uh, to speak with Joe, who I think is ready for us? Really fully embracing desktop metal alongside HP. We're moving into an adjacent building at Matsura. And yes, 10th, 11th, 12th of May, we're opening that facility and inviting customers in. Um, and really, sh doing what we hopefully we're good at which is showcasing the technologies the workflow the post-processing um, I think it's going to be pretty much a very unique facility for the country yes. I, I think that the the fit with this product to your Matsura machines is is brilliant equally has been HP which I'm now going to go and speak to Joe about so thank you very much for your time Peter okay so